Shore, the Service Club. A clean job from start to finish. Oh, praise God, praise God, praise God. We are so grateful to be here today. We're celebrating five years on the air on 1320 WCBG. And we appreciate you listening. We always pray that this broadcast and this ministry is a blessing unto you. And even as I always do, I want to share a word of um, uh, a passage of scripture with you out of the book of James chapter 1 verses 22 through 25 which reads this but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. And I can truly let you know that God has really blessed this ministry and this work that he has called me to do. And he has granted increase. He has multiplied it. And only God can do these things. And so we don't only want to be a hearer of the word, but we want to be a doer of the word. And once you become, once you hear the word and you do the word, you're going to see that God is going to bless that work. And so with that, I am honored today to have a brother in Christ who we uh, do ministry work together uh, from time to time. And I've spoken at his church and it's an honor for me to have him speak on this radio broadcast. And it's my brother, uh, Pastor Stephen Lillard of the uh, Kingdom Ambassadors in Christ International. And he's going to bring the word to help me celebrate uh, this five-year anniversary. And Brother Steve, I'm glad you're here. How you feeling today? I'm feeling well. All I'm right. Well, with here. that, man, you can go ahead. Amen. I know you, you're uh, more than ready to uh, bring the word. So God bless. Amen. Well, it's an honor, Pastor Scales, to be on the radio broadcast this morning. And congratulations again to five years of kingdom work. That is an awesome, awesome, awesome accomplishment. Amen. Well, today, uh, the word that I want to bring to the listeners, amen, is, is what this work is all about. Uh, this work is about spreading the gospel of the kingdom. So the message this today is the gospel or the kingdom within so that and today we're going to talk about what does that mean what does it entail and what did jesus do when he was here living out his life on this earth with his earthly ministry what example did he leave for the body of christ and what mandate and commandment did he tell us to fulfill while we was here on this earth so we understand that Jesus came to usher in the kingdom. And one of the uh, major uh, opposition that came against him was the religious Pharisees. He had to come against the religious people because they did not understand what the message of the kingdom was all about. Okay, so in Luke 17, 21, it says in the Bible that when the Pharisees had asked Jesus, when the kingdom would come, Jesus told the Pharisees that the kingdom was within. So let's talk about what the kingdom within really looks like. Okay. Now, the Bible says in Isaiah 61, there was a prophecy that was prophesied by the prophet Isaiah. And he said this very thing that we're going to talk about today in Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. Now, this scripture was fulfilled by Jesus 700 years after the prophecy was given. Okay, so in Luke chapter four, verse 18 and 19, 
the word of the Lord declares, and Jesus said, and the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Now, this is the very first thing that Jesus said in his earthly ministry about doing the kingdom work in earth was to preach the gospel to the poor. Now, when we preach the gospel to the poor, that means people that are in poverty, those that do not have much, those that they inspire to become, but they don't have the means to become great in this life. So the very first thing that we should do as believers is to preach the gospel to the poor. Amen. God gives us a word to liberate those that are in lack. So yes, this is a gospel of prosperity because Jesus is prosperous because he is the king of glory. Amen. And the Bible says that our father owns the cattle of a thousand hills. We can look to him in anything. So our mandate and our assignment is to preach to those who don't have. Yes. So the word that we give should bring people out of bondage. It should bring them out of poverty. It should set them on a path of prosperity. We should be able to liberate people's minds and give them insight and ideas and bring them out of a poverty mind state so that they can live a life of prosperity in the earth. So he said that he was to preach the gospel to the poor. Then the second thing he says, Jesus said, and he sent me to heal the broken and hearted. Now let's talk about what the broken and hearted looks like. Okay. Because the Bible says when we are broken, that means that we overcome by grief and despair. So when we preach the gospel to those that are broken, we bring the people that are hurt, that are broke down, that are physically tired. The gospel is to bring inspiration to liberate them and bring them out of a place, amen, of feeling like throwing in the towel. Yeah. So when we are out on the battleground, we carry the good news. The gospel is the message of the good news where we preach to bring people into another place that they could not have came into without the spirit of the Lord coming on the scene and talking to them through the people that God has in this earth. Okay. So God is raising up sons and daughters in this hour. And he's telling us to go preach this message to those who don't know him. Okay. Then he said that he sent me to preach deliverance to the captives. Now the captives are those that are bound by sin and addiction. And I don't know about y'all, but this generation that we're living in today, there is a lot of bondage going on. Amen. We have to be in a place where we, the Bible says to come out from among them and be ye separated, say of the Lord. So that means that the that the kingdom citizens is our assignment to bring liberation to those that are bound. And the only way that people will come out of bondage is unless you speak what does say of the Lord into their life. Because the word is backed by the spirit of God and the spirit of God brings life. The Bible says that he will bring us into all truth. Amen. So we are to bring those that are in sin out of bondage. So we have the power within us. We have the gospel within us. We have the Holy Spirit within us. We have the word, which is the logos, which is Jesus manifested. Amen. In us, and because we have this risen Savior living on the inside, and because He's alive and well, we can speak a thing and it will be established. Yes. So we preach the gospel to those that are bound. And then He said, And He sent me to bring sight to them that are blind. Now, the Greek word for blind means telophos. That means enveloped in smoke or unable to see clearly. Yeah. So the Bible says that no man can come to God unless he is drawn by what? By the spirit of God. So we have to be, amen, agents or ambassadors in the earth realm, amen, with the message of the good news to bring those that are bound into the light. The Bible says that we are the salt of the earth and amen. And we are to let the light of God shine through us. But Jesus is the light. Come on, somebody. He is the light of the world and he gives us the power to illuminate him in the earth, in this dark and evil world today. 
So it is imperative and important for the body of Christ to live holy because where there's holiness, amen, where the light is shining, there can be no darkness. Are y'all with me today? So he said, he brings us to bring sight or he sent us to bring sight to the blind. So those that are unable to hear clearly, watch this, those that are blind, if the blind can never lead the blind. So Jesus gives us a word, amen, of freedom to bring them out of bondage. Now, anybody that's blind, amen, we need to come to a place where we learn how to bring them to a place of liberation. And that means we have to begin to pray, church, that God removes the blinders off of those that are blind, that are bound, that are blind and that cannot see. Because if a person does not know God, he cannot see truth. And if he cannot see truth, that means that he is blinded. OK, then Jesus said he went on to say. And he sent me to those that are oppressed. Now, the Greek word for oppressed means thoroso. It means broken into pieces and have no more strength. And I don't know about y'all, but it's but this life can deal a bad hand sometimes. It can be hard sometimes and it can, amen, cause you to want to throw in the towel, amen. And there's a lot going on in our society today, amen, where the spirit of suicide and depression is major right now, amen. And it's taking over a lot of people. People are taking their lives because they feel like they have no hope. But the Bible says that he is raising up his sons in this last hour, amen, with power to preach truth to those who feel like like giving up. He said he sent me to those that are oppressed. So when we preach the kingdom message, the gospel of the kingdom, it is to bring liberation to a people and to a nation who don't know him. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And then he said, and he sent me to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Now, the acceptable year of the Lord is the year of Jubilee. This is the year of Amen. When it talks about the release as in 50, every time you come to the 50th year, that is the year of Jubilee or the year of release. And when we preach the gospel of the kingdom message, amen, we are to bring people out of bondage. We are to bring them out of a dark place into a uh, liberated place. Come on, somebody. We are to bring them out of the place of despair into a place, amen, of happiness and where they can uh, live again and they can love again. Amen. And when they come to a place where they develop a relationship with the almighty God, come on somebody. Amen. So that means that we have to, amen, be on the scene. We have to do the work of the evangelist. Amen. We have to live out the gospel according to Matthew 28 and do the great commission. He said to preach this gospel to the four corners of the earth. We have to be disciples for the Lord Jesus Christ in this hour, because if we don't disciple, people will lose the battle. Come on, somebody. Y'all got to hear me on the airways today because the spirit of the Lord says I'm releasing, amen, my word through my vessels in this hour, amen, and I'm anointing my sons and daughters, amen, with the kingdom mandate to win this generation to myself. Amen. So when we talk about the gospel of the kingdom, we... And see entirety in its entirety what the Lord Jesus Christ was talking about. We see, amen, the opposition because anytime, amen, you deal with religious people, religious people cannot understand kingdom because religion, religious people or religion cannot understand, amen, kingdom business. So you have to come at this thing from another angle. Now, I want to talk about the Apostle Paul because there's two ways to look at this. Okay. Now, what God expected from them as kingdom citizens, I want to talk about in Ephesians chapter one, verse three through 10. I want to look at this from another angle. Okay. Now we have the gospel of the kingdom, which is the message. And then we have the lifestyle. Now we can't preach without living holy because there's a requirement that God 
requires of everyone that calls themselves believers. I didn't say Christians. I said believers because anybody nowadays can call themselves a Christian, but it takes a believer to live holy because Anybody can say that they're living holy, but the devil can preach, but the devil can't live holy. So let's talk about what the Apostle Paul said in Ephesians chapter one. Amen. When he was uh, wrote the letter to the church of Ephesians. Amen. When he was in prison. Now, the Bible says. Verse one, it said, blessed be God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing and heavenly places. Now I want to stop right there because when you are doing the work of the Lord, God will make sure that all of your needs are met. God will activate the gifts within you and he will begin to move powerfully through you. Amen. So that's why the apostle Paul said that he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings because Paul, amen, understood that if I align myself with the will of the father and do the work of the Lord Jesus Christ, he will take care of my needs because I'm taking care of his needs. So we have to understand that as the body of Christ, that amen, even though we have our own needs and we have things that we need, amen, personally, when we do the work of the father, he will make sure that all our needs are met. So, and then Paul goes on to say, just as he has chose us and him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and without blame. There it is. Here's the other requirement. Amen. As living as a kingdom citizen, God calls us to live holy. Amen. He calls us to live without blame. Yeah. So we don't want to do the work and then find ourselves as a castaway. Uh huh. Because God will bless the gift and he will reject the person that's given the gift. Come on. Amen. He will he will use you. Amen. And then cause you to be a castaway because the Bible says that the gifts are without repentance. Yeah. So we need to make sure that we're not just operating with gifts, but we're led by the spirit of God, because the Bible says they that are led by the spirit of God, those are the sons of God. Now, watch this. There's different type of relationships. Amen. When you deal with Yahshua, amen, you have servants, you have friends, and then you have sons. These are different levels of, amen, relationship with the master. Come on. Amen. So servants, they, 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 activate and they do service unto him. Amen. They may be connected to him, but they don't really know him. Amen. And then you have friends. Now, let me just talk about Pastor Alvin Scales and I. We have a pretty good friendship. Amen. And we know each other as friends. Amen. And friends, that means he may know some things about me and I may know some things about him. And, and that's a good thing. Amen. But when you talk about sonship, now, that's a whole nother level of relationship because sons are entitled, amen, to the blessing. Sons are entitled to what the father has because sons are connected. Come on here. Amen. So when you have a relationship with God almighty, amen, we are led by his spirit. Why? Because the Bible says that God is what? Spirit. Amen. So when we deal with Amen. Abba Father, we must deal with him in spirit. That's why he says that he frowns on flesh. The Bible says that no flesh can glory in his presence. Come on, somebody. Amen. So we have to come to the place of crucifying the flesh. Amen. So that God can bless the work of our hands and do what he needs to do in this very hour. So the Apostle Paul goes on to say, before him in love, having what predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself. So because of the blood, because of redemption, because of the plan of salvation, amen, we are adopted into the gospel, we are adopted into the kingdom, amen, that we are connected, we are heirs and joint heirs with the Lord Jesus Christ. That means that what he has, 
we have. What he's entitled to, we're now entitled to. Come on, somebody. So that means that we don't have to worry about anything because all of our needs are met according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. There is nothing that we have to worry about as sons, as kingdom citizens, because God already has it worked out. The Bible says in Jeremiah 29 and 11 that he knows the plans that he has for us. Come on, somebody. Amen. That he gives us hope and an expected end. So that means that the book has already been written for your life. Amen. So as long as you are a son or a daughter of the almighty God, you don't have to worry about anything because God is already worked out the situation on your behalf. The Bible says that all things work together for our good. So if everything is already working for our good, that means that we just have to position ourselves in the will of God and everything else has to work itself out because it, as long as we are in the will of the Father, everything has to align to the word of God. Amen. Come on. So that's why the Bible says, even though we may have messed up, even though we have may have made wrong decisions, the Bible says that he will restore the years that the locusts and the canker worms and the palmer worms and the caterpillars. Come on. That means that every bad thing and every uh, off track, uh, bad decision, sidetrack, every distraction, everything that took you off course. Amen. God says as long as you reposition yourself to the will of the father, he has to catch you back up and bless your life. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah, somebody. So Paul said, he blesses us in all things. Ah, glory to God. I feel the spirit on this air today. And then he said, and in him, we have redemption through his blood. And he forgives us for all of our sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he made abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence. So, today, I just want to encourage you all to position yourself in the perfect will of God. God is causing us in this hour. The Bible says that the earth is waiting. It is groaning for the manifestations of the sons of God. This is the hour where we have to stand up as the body of Christ, and we have to do the work of the kingdom. We have to preach this gospel. Amen. We have to go and win souls. We have to go to the nations. Amen. Because they are seeking for answers. Amen. So that's all I have today. Amen. On this wonderful broadcast. I pray blessings on everyone. And I'm going to turn it back over to you, Pastor. God oh, bless, bless you. you, man. That was a rich word. I pray that somebody's soul was touched by that word. Uh, that is just what was needed at this appointed time. And I thank you, my brother in Christ. And we're going to stay on the battlefield for the Lord because Amen. we're in the business of winning souls for Jesus Christ. And with that, may God bless the rest of your day. Bless you.